using the services like I paid you or doing Blue SoundCloud. So type of content of the interviews. Fox Fox and Andrew said get like uh, sound effects and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, taking content as well from hyper local websites, which I think is a good idea. Wouldn't that take Well, requesting permission. Aggregated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's offering them the opportunity to amplify it. Yeah, if yeah. they're very hyper local, then you could say, well, we can amplify it for the year through mm -hmm. the Citizens Relay project as a part of Media 2012, the Scottish Hub. So, therefore, we can give it the UK wide because we'll be acting up in Leicester and then do something with it as well. Yeah, so uh, profiles as well of like the torch bearers and local leaders as well. Oh, that'd be nice. Good, yeah. Um, That's the kind of thing that local papers would pick up in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've mentioned uh, newspapers as well, mainstream television, um, existing community media groups, so like community radio and stuff like that, and newsletters. And then we went on to talk about like Wi Fi and access and 3G and stuff like that. Oh, right. yeah. So yeah, that's us, really. Yeah, you could have like, pretty much given in there, so video, audio, images, yeah. comments, text. Well, you put down there about Wi Fi and yeah. you know, notice like if you've got a social media a phone or um, that you know if you've got three G then in effect you are able to communicate wherever you are. There's a project we've been monitoring with our down like our homelessness news agency in Leicester that's down in London that have been experimenting giving um, I think it might be Wi Fi's that you were talking yeah. about to people that are homeless and making them into Wi Fi hotspots and employing them to kind of be, because they're there all the time, yeah. <laughs> um, to be like their uh, Wi Fi hotspot in a particular area. So that could be quite interesting to look at some of that technology. Oh, that's yeah. I suppose the other thing to kind of think about as well is consider other people's content as content yeah. that, you've, that you can utilise. So other um, relay based events and projects. Can be kind of good piece of content. You can say this really thing is happening today, or something else. That's brilliant. One one interesting thing with that is that we have a number of relays being run that are nothing to do with the torch really at the time of the torch really because people are not involved. So the the, the torch really doesn't go as close to them as they would wish. Yeah. And they run on their own. Really, however, off of this, and, and that's not going to come under the probably under the view of the, the other media organisations because they are focused on the torch really if you like. There's organisations that have been in touch with us and were mentioned earlier, aren't they? We're about, you know, they're really so very the wary of not covering it, I think as well, not to kind of upset if they've got like a, someone like the BBC who never touch it, coming back to your comment when you were first talking this morning about how you covered the the protests. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Like that about how the BBC and STV were there, but they never even reported on it. Quite clearly, they filmed it and yeah. then chose not to do it. But it might be someone who would cover the talk to relay. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Cool. Should we look at number question number two? Why can we? Why can we put this bracket? Um, well, we kind of spoke about not only where we can put content, but also uh, where we can kind of um, kind of sort of can go involved in that kind of thing as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of said obviously social networking as we said we were talking about before so obviously main sites like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Flickr which are going to be the kind of means that citizens really have themselves and um, but we also mentioned as well personal sites so your own personal Facebook and um, your own personal Twitter if you have blogs and um, if you have any other kind of websites as well just to kind of post it on that as well so at the same time it's giving us you know some more coverage and for it's and really as well as you know putting our actual content on it. And um, we also said because you know some of our university students as well actually going to universities and possibly your own university, then you can go around the campus uh, at one maybe five courses would be an option. And um, but also just talking to people, um, especially in kind of media sections, you know, if you have a bit of problems there. Also your tutors, I know that I before got one of my tutors to send out like a mass email to all the students. Um, we can also put it on our kind of blackboard sites as well, which is really good. So that's an outreach to a lot of students as well. Um, and whether they'd be interested in even featuring anything on the on their uh, computers as well, because they have different screen savers to maybe say you know citizen relay and that kind of thing as well. So it'd be really good for that. Um, we also said in your workplace as well. 
you know, some people might work in kind of media things, and like Melissa does, you know, in community radio. Um, but also, even if you just work in a shop or that kind of thing, you can still also use your contacts there because they still, you know, maybe even your managers or your directors of companies and that kind of thing, because they've obviously going to have quite a lot of knowledge and maybe contacts as well in kind of Glasgow or Edinburgh or your areas. Um, your personal networks as well, and contacts like family and friends. Um, you can obviously get them to kind of publicise stuff on their own social networking sites. Um, or email as well, you know, things can go viral, like videos, especially if you email a video and then say, you know, email it to your friends. Um, and then also kind of local media outlets as well, so obviously there's local papers, um, but then as well, kind of local bloggers, you find out people um, in local areas, citizen, obviously citizen journalists, um, community radio stations like Melissa works at, um, hospital radio stations, um, and community groups as well, so say like youth groups and that kind of thing as well, to try and get them involved. It's quite interesting you say about, because John actually has um, managed to get the Citizen Eye logo in all the library computers in yeah. Leicester. Well, in the city, is it just the central library or is it the... All the libraries. Yeah, so when you log in, library. when you log in to the library, it comes up, Citizen News, Community yeah. Media. So there is, and we were talking about on the earlier on about like sticking posters up in shops and community notice boards, mm -hmm. you know, just printing a poster and sticking it up, you know, you never know who sees it. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, the universities, for example, and I'm sure you go university stroke colleges and other providers in that, the, the, we're part of a skill set media academy network, so there, there are many of those that have been involved, if you like, but you're right, it's, it's, a very, it's about actually, when you're in that environment, spreading it through the old student population, because it, it's easy sometimes for tutors to be made aware of it, and then just to, to mention it to a few people out there, but not actually it's sort of giving people confidence, isn't it? Because a lot of people are actually quite nervous about applying for these opportunities. They don't think it's for them, or I don't do that degree, or I don't go to university, or I don't, you know, the, so it's about giving them the confidence more than, you know, just saying sign up. Because it takes a lot for somebody to actually apply for these. Some of that is the Creative Look Festival, which is run by uh, six colleges, and they have different colleges that are involved in different areas. And it's part of that, and again, they, they've been very good at promoting it because I think, again, it feels quite real to them. All the production things that they do fit very well with what we are, we are trying to achieve. And so we had a session at their in the festival with the podcast up there um, on the website now, which was uh, taken at the Miami, actually, we did the podcast work on it. And um, so, again, it's, it's just an every opportunity where we can mention something, really, someone asks you to talk about it, then if you can, then you have to do an interview or whatever. You're generating content in that way, someone's going to do an interview with you. Then great. You know, it doesn't have to come back to, well, I need to go back to David or I need to go back to Jane mm -hmm. or to talk about it actually. Hopefully, well, after they get a sense of what we're trying to achieve, you can actually get some to read it out yourself to actually talk about the project. Now, I think a lot of what they said relates to, to what we already have, and a point that you had made, which is a good one in terms of Jane, Jane and I's uh, increasing kind of list of <laughs> to do's yeah. after the is, is when we are using, because we're, we're going to share using Google Docs. We've, I've got a database of about, already has about 100 individuals or organisations who've attended our launch, who've interacted with us, got in touch with us, so I've been keeping that quite diligently. So those areas, in terms of your local areas, some of that can be broken down into, well that's in the North East, that's in, uh, in Renes area or whatever, and we can break that up so that you've got, you've, you're not starting from scratch, you're not calling if you like saying we don't know any now either, we've got some of those already. So, some of these people are already involved, and again, so I mean, there's more. I think maybe if people, others that they already know that they've interacted with, get in touch, and I can populate it further. But we've got a number of organisations that we've been trying to reach. We've got quite significant following, so community-focused or community media-focused organisations, or they're young persons-focused organisations, whatever. So Young Scott have are, are involved and are keen to promote, and they have I mentioned earlier they have youth legacy ambassadors for the Commonwealth Games, but seven of those are have already shown interest in being reporters through Young Scott promotion. Because Young Scott do a lot with young people in terms of media skill stuff as well. Like they just advertise about digital media and terrible and all that long whatever. So they're trying to do a lot there. So again they're 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 some of these are nationwide and I think that's particularly useful for us. They're not just Glasgow in the West or focus. They're promoting that message to, to others. So if we then get local contacts then we can share that with, with yourselves. STV local and Edinburgh report some of the hyper local networks. You know, are again quite important for us because clearly they're in the same terrain, and um, they may have a slightly different purpose, but there, but there are people there who maybe we can share content with. That we can, you know, that we actually get benefit from being involved in something quite similar. The community media 
you know, organisations already, so Aberdeen also we from SHMU, it's great, but again, other organisations other parts of the country have already been, been working with us, and Cam Glenn and others are, are, are part of that. Um, an organisation is Scottish Community Development Centre, for example, again, they, have, they deal with community development across Scotland, helping people, supporting them, they're quite similar, if you like, to Media Trust, who's, who's doing that for you know, Newsnet for media, community media side of it, but these are community, uh, uh, Scottish Community Development Centre all about community development, but they want to use media as a mechanism for empowering people to actually do stuff in their community. So it's, again, it's an ideal network, and they're blogging about us and promoting us through their networks, and again, that's Scotland-wide. So, these are already happening, and there's more to that which I'll send out to people. Big Scotland, which is a big lottery in Scotland, again, supports a variety of media projects. Uh, and then again, they're actively pushing what we're doing. So that hopefully leads to more recruitment of reporters. And again, we, we just listed some other people. Who else? I mean, and there's more to this. I mean, again, we think there may be a Glasgow reporter version of any reporter, which, which we, we need to follow up on. Local authorities, so that is, you know, 32 of them, they're all involved. You have been communicating with them, but again, you get you sometimes get a sports development officer who's the contact, who's maybe not quite as relevant as if it had been an arts officer, who maybe saw some opportunities for creativity. So again, it's following up on those within the individual regions. Um, so the hydro local networks, I want to think it was that, that Loyana mentioned again. So these are these are real organisations you can get to. Glasgow, there's the Swamp and Fair, both community media type organisations. Um, and again, a, a few others, and we'll, we'll populate these. Um, in terms of other projects, but you know, it's it's as as we now have all, all the use here, then we can communicate that on the Google Docs, update it. Here's a new person in your area. I've got somewhere now to send it and say maybe, you know, they say I use someone in Edinburgh, I use someone in East Coast. Is there a way in which we start communication or something? It needs to come back to us in the centre. To eventually, that's fine, but we can at least be able to manage more of the communication than we were able to um, before. So again, you can, if people are, before they go, if they put any type of skill, they can maybe add to that if there's, if there's other things. I think, I think the police is um, oh, a key one. I mean, yeah. we're working quite closely with them because we teach them Twitter and Facebook <laughs> and social media and stuff. Obviously, the way I've done it is we've finished training, I've just trained 280 of the beat officers and PCSOs in the city centre where the torch is going to go through. So the idea is, well, if they're going to deploy them down the route, then they could be with one of our young reporters or one of our old reporters, and then we could kind of yeah. All work together to create content because it's positive for the police then about their social media. Strategy. And they sort of understand what we're doing rather than thinking. I mean, I think there's a big, there's a, a kind of narrative around the Olympics that there's a security and there's going to be no access. But if you're actually working with your local Bobby, <laughs> you might actually be more inclined to get access because you're working in partnership. You're not working against it or trying to do something that's seems to be unusual or, or suspicious because there is a security element to it so it is actually engaging with them prior to that would be quite useful. I think the thing to remember really is just how big this relay is. Yeah. Not what you're doing but the actual when it arrives, like I said it's 150 vehicles. Yeah. You know what I mean? that, that's, a, that's a big thing. Well, I think that's one of the things we're talking about. It's about being able to say that we'll, we can be here and here and here. Mm. Can't be here, 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 all the way. Yeah. Each room. And that's that's it's just not achievable. Mm. Um, I think the key task at this moment actually is to is to still push on reporters because our reporter training is probably two and a half weeks time. So there are certain areas we need more reporters. So that in some ways, if there's a short term thing, it's about trying to get to the networks in your area to still get the reporters on board. Because once we have them on board, then we've got a resource. You know, the less reporters we have on board, then we we, we have even less of a resource to be able to to decide what we cover. So that's that's for me the key, the key thing at the moment. We've just promoted stuff through the S1 communities which has got websites, all local websites around the country. And again, in your area, you know, we've, we've just posted up information. I'll send on the, the paragraphs that will be pushing to that to maybe get into your own networks because they're a very local one. Yeah. Um, and again, there's, there's news information on there that we can share. I'm aware that people have...